Kale Beck here from startingstrongman.com and today we're going to go over a couple tips for elevated poles. This is a, a silver dollar deadlift with the deadlift boxes. It's also, it's called that because it's from 18 inches and the first time it was done it, had, it was just big boxes like this filled with silver dollars because it was done in Vegas. Uh, so this is an 18 inch deadlift and strongman we pull from various heights. It could be a 13 inch, 15 inch. A normal barbell off the ground is 9 inches. So your setup for pulling from an elevated height is going to be different than if you're pulling from a normal barbell with normal plates that is only 9 inches off the ground. And when you try to have that same starting position that you have with a regular deadlift on an elevated pole, um, sometimes it just doesn't, it just, it's not the right starting position, it's a different lift. Okay, so the basic setup that I'm going to have for an elevated pole and uh, your setup is going to be obviously a little different depending on what the height is. You know, if it's 15, 13, 18, it's going to be very, it's going to be slightly different depending on the heights and your unique builds. I'm of course short, as you can tell. So uh, this is the one out of like two events that it actually helps to be short and strong in. So what you want to do is I want to, you want to play around with how wide or narrow your feet are going to be, and this is going to be different than your conventional deadlift with regular plates. So you might want you know, your feet a little bit wider. Your hands, of course, have to be outside. For me, I found the most power I have is with um, slightly inside shoulder width stance. It's gonna depend on what your specific weaknesses and strengths are. The main thing you want to do, though, is to push your knees out to so your open and your groin and your hips. Because with elevated, uh, elevated poles, you're going to use a lot of hip strength. So if I'm here, I'm all closed off and I'm using all my low back, some hamstrings. So I want to point my knees out and really drive them out as I'm lifting the barbell up. I'm bringing my hips forward, squeezing your glutes. <laughs> Finish the walkout. So this is the main problem that I see people do is especially if you're like me and it's very close to your kneecaps. People try to leverage the lift and they try to lean back like this and start like, like this. Your hips are so far behind you that you're in a very bad mechanical position to actually lift the weights. So this is the main, this is the main take home advice you should take from this video and apply to your own lifting and try this and, it, and it's probably gonna help you if you've been struggling with elevated poles I know USS Nationals have, actually, and the Arnold have a, I think, 13-inch axle deadlifts coming up in their contest, so a lot of you will probably be training this lift, is instead of trying to start with your shoulders behind the bar, like you would um, with a deadlift off the floor, start with your shoulders a little bit in front of the bar. This can allow you to engage your hamstrings. I get here, you gotta get everything very tight, very, very tight. It's even more important an elevated deadlift than it is a deadlift off the floor because it's probably with more weight than your one rep max is so it's overload so you have to be ready for that additional load than uh, you're used to. So brace, everything, shoulders over the bar and I kind of pump my legs to engage my hamstrings, lock it out versus if you see if I try to sit back there's no power off the bottom. I'm taking my hamstrings and my posterior chain mostly out of the movement and it's going to make, and you're just going to sit there like this for 60 seconds. Where if you put your shoulders over the bar, drive the knees out, engage hamstrings, it makes it a lot easier and that should help you with your elevated poles.